the Tribune News Network. This is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. 20,000 COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccines arrived at Lyndon Pindling International Airport yesterday, symbolizing the start of a new era as the country looks to move beyond the COVID-19 pandemic and return to normalcy. Frontline workers can expect to get vaccinated starting next week, with trial runs expected this weekend. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis told reporters he and other government officials were on hand to receive the vaccines, which have been donated by the Indian government. Organizations representing healthcare workers have complained about being left in the dark over how to register to take the vaccine. Asked about it yesterday, Dr. Minnis says he has other concerns. He said, quote, I think I am more concerned about rolling out the vaccines and getting the vaccines delivered in the arms of the Bahamian populace so we could get back to normalcy as quickly as possible. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control has released guidelines detailing the freedoms fully vaccinated people can be allowed to enjoy. They include the freedom to associate with other vaccinated people without wearing a mask. Disney Cruise Line yesterday voiced hope it can start developing its Lighthouse Point project this year. Kim Prunty, its vice president of public affairs, told a Zoom call with Bahamian Media that despite the pandemic delaying Disney's plans by a year to a year and a half, it will still deliver 120 construction jobs, some 80 percent of which will be Bahamian. For a cruise destination whose build out will be complete by the 2024 first half, speaking as Disney released its 550 page environmental impact assessment, a document document whose disclosure has long been demanded by local and environmental activists, Ms. Prunty promised that the project's economic impact will significantly exceed the concessions granted by the Bahamian government. Five men and two women were arrested after a police search netted 13 croaker sacks of suspected marijuana with an estimated street value of $336,000. The drugs weighed 336 pounds. The suspect's age range is between early 20s to late 40s, and they all are Bahamians, the police said. At the scene, Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters said the suspects may be related. However, he was unable to confirm. The government has secured the funding needed to complete work on four Family Island airports, Tourism and Aviation Minister Dionisio Diaguilar announced yesterday, adding that the total cost of the projects is expected to be about $175 million. Speaking at Parliament, the Freetown MP said the airport developments will take place on the islands of Exuma, Long Island, Eleuthera and Abaco. While he did not give a timeline as to when the projects will be completed, Mr. Diaguilar said officials have secured funding from a local financial institution, while all also using funds from the Inter-American Development Bank. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, about one in five Americans say they lost a relative or close friend to the coronavirus, highlighting the division between heartache and hope as the country itches to get back to normal a year into the pandemic. A new poll illustrates how the stage is set for a two-tiered recovery. The public's worry about the virus has dropped to its lowest point since the fall, before the holidays brought skyrocketing cases into the new year. But people still in mourning express frustration at the continued struggle to stay safe. The European Medicines Agency on Thursday gave the green light to Johnson & Johnson's one-dose coronavirus vaccine, handing the European Union's 27 nation a fourth vaccine to try to speed up the bloc's much-criticized vaccination rollout. The EU medicines regulator advised that the vaccine be cleared for use in all adults over 18. After a thorough evaluation of J&J's data, found the vaccine met the criteria for efficacy, safety and quality. The EMA has already recommended COVID-19 vaccine made by Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, and AstraZeneca. But all of those vaccines require two doses, several weeks apart. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A robust high-pressure system north of the area will continue to aid in generating fresh to strong breezes, along with choppy seas as it slides eastwards. Meanwhile, a weakening frontal boundary will gradually shift northwards, enhancing shower activity across the southeast Bahamas through tonight. Small craft operators in the southeast Bahamas are urged to remain in port, and beachgoers should refrain from entering the water across all areas due to high seas, rough surf, and dangerous rip currents. Boaters in the southeast Bahamas should also remain vigilant due to the threat of possible water spout activity. Drivers and pedestrians should continue to exercise extreme caution while traversing coastal roadways along northern and eastern shorelines. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, a bit warm, and windy, with light passing showers through 
through tonight. A small craft advisory is in effect. Winds northeast to east at 20 to 25 knots, but gusty at times. Seas 4 to 6 feet near shore, building 7 to 10 feet but higher in gusts over open waters. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be mostly cloudy, warm and windy, with widely scattered showers and the slight chance of a few isolated thunderstorms along the frontal boundary through tonight. Small craft operators should remain in port due to swells. Expect gusty winds in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds northeasterly at 22.